Hey everyone, let's get right into finishing up our NES. We're going to start by creating the AV sockets in the back. AV sockets are audio visual sockets. If there's any younger viewers, that's like how you used to plug stuff into TVs before all the other crazy stuff. I don't even know if they exist anymore. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm just committed to a higher poly count, so I'm going to use 32 vertex circles, which is definitely probably overkill for such a small detail, so you might prefer to use 6 or 8 vertex circles instead if you want to keep your geometry more reasonable. I don't know why you want to do that. In object mode, hit shift A and add a circle. Tab in edit mode and rotate by 90 degrees on the Y axis. Now in object mode, position the circle at the center of the one on the reference. Tab into edit mode and scale down. It's been a hot minute since I've seen an AV socket in real life and I can't really remember what it looks like up close, and my reference isn't helping much, so I'm just going to extrude and scale circles and hope it looks close enough. When its general shape is finished, move it along the x-axis until it sticks out of the NES's side. Select all and shade smooth. I'm going to select and extrude this loop of faces in. And then manually bevel some of these edges with Control b This is once again probably overkill on the geometry for any models that you want to use. This will probably account for several pixels in most renders, but it's really good practice for learning how to get the shapes that you want. The recognizability of this port really relies on its materials, so let's switch over to the Material tab and make a few. Add the second NES material to the first material slot. With Face Select active, I'll select this loop of faces and whichever other ones you want. Add a new material slot and create a new material. Assign it to these faces and change it to a red color. In object mode, select and duplicate this with Shift D and move it on the Y axis to line up with the other socket. Duplicate the red material and change it to yellow. Feel free to make any adjustments to your shape as you see fit. So as far as I can tell, the NES actually has large openings around these ports. So let's make those now. Again, you could add these with a boolean modifier or manually. I'm gonna go with manual. Shift select these two socket objects and join them into one with Control J. I'll select these outermost edge loops on each socket duplicate them with Shift-D, and then hit P, separate by selection. This will give us a new object with circles that are lined up with our current shapes. It'll kind of be hard to select, but it's this object right here. Tab into edit mode, make sure the pivot point is set to individual origin, and scale up. How big you want these openings is up to you. Grab and move them up on the Z axis, leave a little gap between the ports and the bottom of the circle. Select the upper half of these circles however you want. I'm going to hold Ctrl and select these two vertices to select the shortest path between them, and then delete them with X. And the same with this one. While holding Shift, select all the upper vertices, and extrude edges upward. Select and fill in these final edges at the top. So our goal now is to create a new shape to go into this location, which is rectangular and has these openings cut in. You can do it many different ways. I'm going to switch to face select, select the main face, and hit P to separate by selection. Now in object mode, hold shift and select this face and the shapes that we just made. It might be easier to select them in the outliner. And then hit Ctrl J, join them together. So now we want to line everything up. Select the openings, and then a single vertex on the big face last. Switch the pivot point to active element, and scale down on the X axis by zero to flatten it all out. It should all line up now, so face select the big face and delete only faces. So here's our shape, we just need to fill it in with faces. You can choose to do this however you want. This is a good situation to utilize poles. It's a flat surface that'll never be animated.
Now we need to reconnect this face to the bottom of the NES. So, shift select both objects and join with Ctrl J. Tab into edit mode and select all with A. Hit M and merge by distance. If all went well, it should join these faces back together. And all did not go well for me because at some point I must have moved my shape just a tiny bit on the Y axis by accident. So it's not merging as simply as it should. You could snap these faces together, but that will slightly change the shape. So I fixed it by selecting my entire new shape, zooming way in and aligning it manually before merging. Now select all and merge by distance does what I want it to. Hooray! I should have also turned off snapping beforehand, but it worked out okay this time. That looks pretty good. I did it. Using edge select, alt shift select these two openings and duplicate with shift D. You can leave this as part of this object, but I'm gonna hit P and make a new object out of my selection. However you decide to do it, extrude these edges back into the NES. Now fill in these back faces by extruding and merging together at center. These edges are beveled, which I don't want. So you could drop the bevel modifier, but I'm going to split the upper face with Y. And then maybe assign a black material to this object so that it looks like it's dark in there. This is as good a time as any to save your project. Always save frequently. Should've probably saved it before now. Next thing to do is this front panel where the buttons and the light are. I'm going to do this similarly to how we just did the AV ports, since the light and buttons will have recesses. So outline everything in edge loops. Make sure to use E and F to get the right edge loop shape. Select these two faces. Be sure that you're selecting the front faces. Hit I to inset faces. Now delete the selected faces with X. We need to make the panel that goes over this opening. Hold shift and select these edges. Duplicate with shift D and separate with P. Go into edit mode and fill in the face with F. And in vertex select, dissolve these extra vertices. I couldn't get a super clear look at it on any of my references, but I think this area bumps out a tiny bit. Let's get rid of the boolean modifier, adjust the amount on the bevel modifier, and either add a solidify modifier or just simply extrude the face forward. I'm going to move my face forward and then add a solidify modifier. I think that'll be the easiest. Put it in the top modifier position so that the edges also get beveled. To make it less confusing, I'm going to turn off the visibility of the lower NES object. And also should probably name some of these other objects. Probably. Now we need lots of edge loops. More loops! Basically just outline all the details. Select and delete the button faces. Or if you want to be smart, separate them and use them as the buttons. That would work. If you want different edges on your mesh to have their own bevel size, you can use weight as the limit method and then assign bevel weights to edges individually. I want some sort of light blocker to sit behind this opening, so I duplicated this face, resized it, and positioned it behind this panel. And then extrude it back and delete the front face, which essentially made an open box that blocks the light. Now assign a black material to it. Add a few more edge loops here to cut in the light.
Select this face and split it off with Y. Shift it back on the Y axis and scale it up slightly. Create a new material for the light. In the material editor, assign it to this face. Change the base color to black. Add a mixed shader node here and an emission shader set to red. Adjust the strength. And now this factor slider turns the light on or off or anything in between. Now for the power buttons. They're just cubes with a bevel, so make them however you prefer. There looks to be a gap between the buttons and the panel, so make them slightly smaller than the openings. Don't forget to harden the normals if you use a bevel modifier. Also, this face will need some work, so it's probably best to separate it into its own object. As a byproduct of how I've set up these faces with the bevel modifier, there's tiny gaps in the mesh around the corners. So I'm going to fill my entire NES with a light blocking shape. And be sure not to clip out of the NES anywhere. At this point, it feels like most of the modeling is done to me. Well, at least like what I'm going to model. So I'm going to check how it looks using the different render engines. It looks pretty good, but we could improve it a bit with some simple shaders. So I'm going to set those up real quick. In between filming, I turned on screen space reflections so that there's a little more realism to the shaders. Here's the lighter body color. If I zoom in, you can see how it has a little bit more going on with it in rendered view than just like a flat color. You can add as much detail to your materials as you want, or even get some ABS plastic PBRs. Here's the darker gray material. And here's the black material. They're pretty simple, but should catch the light in a slightly more interesting way. I was messing around with the bevel options and found that I liked the look of the arc miter shape more than sharp. Also that my solidify modifier is not quite thick enough since my bevel thickness clamp has a limit to the bevel size to avoid weird edges. So if the thickness modifier is set over 0.02, then the bevel modifier gets the most out of its bevel. Another thing I changed was the material on the AV plugins. I just made a simple metallic shader with a medium amount of roughness and slightly gray. I want to pull the buttons out a little bit more and make the bevel a little larger. And for some finishing touches, we can put some basic lettering textures on the body. Duplicate the darker gray material and rename it. Add a mix node here. 
and an image node. I made a texture with as close as I could get to the NES text on it. I'll upload it to our Patreon if you want to use it as well. Change this color to something else and switch over to the UV editor. While over the 3D viewport, hit U and choose Project from View. Then line up your UVs. Now let's make our text red colored. Back in the material editor, drop this connection to the bottom and choose a red color for the top. And I think that looks pretty good. The text on the lid is essentially the same process. I just copied the texture and color setup we had on the buttons over and then projected the lid from view. But since I'm decimating my subdivided geometry, projecting from view has some unintended outcomes. So we're going to want to archive this shape and then apply the modifiers. Also on your image texture node, be sure to switch from repeat to extend. Then you can play around with the UVs until it fits nice. This is what I ended up with. Another little detail that you might want to try adding is the openings for the screws, which you can do with a boolean modifier and some cylinders. This back one has a bit more complicated of geometry, so you might have better luck if you archive this lower object, apply its modifiers, and then the border around the boolean cylinder will be a perfect plane. Makes it easier. Another cool detail that you can add pretty quickly is the little circular feet the NES has, which is essentially just a bunch of circles. One final thing to do is if you don't plan on having controllers plugged into the front, you might want to create the ports where they plug into. A low poly solution to them is just to texture the sockets on. Or you can do as I did and create a few simple shapes and use boolean modifiers set to union to join them together. Then decimate and triangulate the result. Take this panel and increase the solidify modifier quite substantially and then use a boolean modifier to carve the new shape out of it. As you can see by the renders, it's not completely photorealistic, but at first glance you could mistake it for a real NES. And it's currently somewhat high poly. But the majority of these details, with some minor adjustments, could be very easily baked onto a low poly model. We have an example of that available for download on Patreon. It's within the NES model's blend file if you'd like to check it out. Or a drop in the bevel segments, and a few decimate modifiers could limit that geometry quite substantially as well. Thank you for watching! I hope you enjoyed and maybe learned a few things along the way. This is essentially the process I used to model almost all of my static objects, so you can apply these methods in a ton of different ways to create almost anything. Please leave us a like and subscribe if you're not. If you're interested in checking out this NES model, we've got it up on our Patreon. Thank you again, stay safe! I love you all! Goodbye! Goodbye!